Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in TNO, The Last Days of Europe, in which we are playing as a certain Iberian nation, or really just the Iberian Union, right now, led by Francisco Franco, and we look at that beauty, and we want a little part of North Africa too, so, uh, we'll just get right into it, and do our best to not fail. Now, uh, with this campaign, I my, it's my intention to try to prevent the collapse of the Union, because, at the time of this recording, if we collapse, the countries that spawn out of us don't have focus trees, and I like focus trees, so we're going to do our best to save the Union no matter what. But of course, like normal, the mods I'm using are TNL Last Days of Europe, player led peace conferences, uh, colored buttons, colored events, and state center tool mod, but we'll see what happens, and we're becoming the sick man right now, even though we kind of already are, but we'll do the best we can to save the country with, of course, Francisco Franco, as well as uh, Salazar, the Portuguese leader, of course, here. And, of course, try to build the dam in Gibraltar. So, uh, if you want to read about the Iberian Union, go right ahead. And then there's another page of text for if you would like to read about it. There we go. And then the newborn nation, of course. Basically, with the dam, uh, it was abandoned by the Germans. Uh, and basically it was given it to us. So, cool. Let's go do some research pretty early on. Industry-wise, well, it's 1962. Let's go ahead and grab some more. We're so... Civilian construction speed? Yes, please. Civilian construction too. We're going to build up a lot of that if we can. Let's see. Cap? I always go with cap. It just... I love cap. Cap more than almost anything else. Max factories in the state will be very, very important. Less growth output. Free repairs? Okay. Uh, we can focus on our land auction, but we're not going to get into any, hopefully, any conflict anytime soon. But let's grab some more research speed, because that's going to be very, very important as time goes on. But we have the 1962 colonial budget already done. If you'd like to read that, go right ahead. But basically, we have to get through everything here. And when we play this campaign, we got to make sure that we're still relatively popular. Our leader will literally change if uh, Franco or Salazar's popularity increases or decreases. And of course, like I said earlier, we have the Gibraltar Dam, where we're going to be spending a lot of money. But let's go get some more factories. Matters beyond the Sahara. Although Iberia's other African possessions may not be as important as Morocco or Algeria, all would do well to remember that the Iberian colonial empire goes beyond the Sahara. Sadly, these colonies are very undeveloped, and with the government's attention focused on possessions closer to home and the deserts of North Africa. However, the latest reports show that Iberia's colonies to the south show quite an economic potential, with the climate in the Guinness perfect for agriculture and the several archipelagos possible sites for trade hubs. As such, a considerable amount of money has been reserved for the development of these regions with the hopes of them becoming yet another prosperous part of Iberia in the future, which we get two whole two civilian factories in which we have another army, or another army, we have our entire army here, which we'll deal with in a little bit. So we're making nothing, wow. Um, I haven't been criticized yet, so I'm still going to make some APCs and tanks because they're just so god darn effective. I'll make some motorized just in case we have something that needs motorized, but... APCs and tanks are just so nice. We'll probably not make that. Probably not make that. Experimental helicopters? No, thank you. Battle tanks, IFEs. They're just weak. They're just light tanks. They're just not that strong. Jet fighters. We're going to grab... Do we want... Do we have carriers? Do we have... How's our fleet looking? I didn't look at the fleet before we did this. So we got some destroyers. We got some subs. We got some more destroyers. We've got some more destroyers. And we've probably got more destroyers. Okay, so we have no carriers. Um, You know what? We probably won't need a fleet at all. Well, how do we make a carrier? We could try that. But for now, we'll make some convoys just because I don't want to produce garbage. Let's make some carriers. Why not? We'll get one. Cass or tactical bombers. Well, we'll probably only need either one, really. Let's go with... Since we're in Africa... It's probably best if we get more range, honestly. Even though I love, I love cast so much. Oh, we'll go, oh, actually, you know what? Never mind. Since we need to get, if we're making carriers, we're gonna get some close air support for pl close air support planes for the carriers. So we might as well just go with normal cast since we have to research this anyways. So we might as well do that, right? We might as well. Early strategic bombers. I don't use interceptors. I love tactical bombers, but we're not, probably not gonna use them. Early transports. Forget about it for now. All right. So we got all that done. And honestly, we're probably gonna need some more guns. And then we'll probably need some more artillery. And then we're going to need some more of this as well. And then some of this. And that looks not too bad. Basic CVs. Uh, those are both pretty good. Do that. Not bad. Okay. So free civilian factors. We're just going to build up. Build, 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 build. More CVs, please. We need a build, build, build. We're going to turn the Iberian Union into an industrial juggernaut. And what do we have? Low 
go to high for now. Uh, let's see, we got this division here. It is 12 combat width, which is not bad with support companies. And then we have this one, which is basically the same thing, but with two less infantry battalions. And then you have nothing compared, no support equipment, with exactly similar to that. Uh, these are obviously the ones we want. Uh, actually, you know what? We'll probably make them like 20 combat width and then 40 combat width eventually. I'm sorry, man. APCs are great, but IFVs, 39, 38, basically 39 armor. Well, it's 39. 66 armor. I mean, man. Is there, are, are they even trying? Are they even trying, man? All right. So with this in mind, we're going to ruin our fuel supplies. Well, let's, let's let time go on a little bit. And... Admiral, so the struggle for popularity. The unification of the Iberian Peninsula has been a tumultuous, if necessary, task in order to prevent divisive social and political issues from tearing the new country apart. Both leaders of the previously separate nations agreed to hold a pattern or position of power that shattered equal political standing. They became the Cadillos of Iberia, the saviors of a union besieged. <clears throat> However, neither man is entirely satisfied with their current standing and constantly wrestle for power and influence. To do this, they use the sway of interest groups such as regional ethnicities or corporate interests. Hence, the ever-changing political arena of high Iberian politics is a scene to behold, with both Cadillas unwilling to let the other gain ultimate control of the nation. Interesting. And he is a leader for now, which is which doesn't matter at all. Because it's, both leaders are both become leaders of the nation eventually so so we gotta talk about the dam so let's go ahead and talk about that let time go on just a little bit so after the german reich became the master of the europe in the late 40s they decided to pursue the feverish dream project known as alantropa the star of the project is the gibraltar dam which reduced the level of the mediterranean sea by more than 100 meters and expanded the land area of almost all countries in the region even though most of this new territory is now a salted desert <clears throat> So, the Germans took care of the dam until their economy crashed in the 50s and swiftly left it, leaving us in charge of the husk of a failed Nazi project. The dam is currently 43.5% towards completion. The yearly cost of the dam is about $550 million, of which it breaks down that way. At the end of the year, the total cost of the dam will be subtracted from a liquid reserve, but if we can't afford to pay it, it will go to our national debt. The current budget allocated for the dam is $7 million, which we'll spend a lot of time on, making sure we can improve it. Uh, right now, the current uh, the workers are very upset. The angrier the dam workers are, the slower they will work, and if they strike, no upgrade work will be able to be carried out. The current chairman is Manuel Elises Calafet, who prioritizes, prioritizes upgrades over maintenance uh, operations, making upgrade decisions cheaper and maintenance decisions more expensive. I'm going to replace him immediately. I want a guy who understands the workers, uh, prioritizes maintenance over upgrade work, or Rui Sanchez who prioritizes the workers' well-being over dam work, and name the chairman. Name him the chairman. Yeah, let's do that. <clears throat> I'm doing this just because uh, I want them, the workers to be content, not upset, just content with whatever they have. That, that'll be good to improve this. So complete the administration building. This will increase the total cost of upgrade expenses. We lose money, but what is money, but just but a bunch of numbers. And we'll do this stuff too. We want to get this done, stuff done as fast as possible, but that's fine with me. Uh, let's come over to the budget. Slash military spending, we don't need it. Ah, oh, look, that looks pretty good. Um, in the meantime, how many factories? Ooh, that's not good. Debt is but a number. Let's just go ahead and get some more debt. Or increase the deficit, I should say. So we got some tanks over here. That's nice. Let time go on now. Oh, I thought I could grab both of you. I'm just going to convert both of you to tanks. Actually, one of you already are a tank division. I'll convert both of these to tanks. Cool. Matters beyond the Sahara. And which uh, worsens the needs of opinion. It doesn't really matter what they think of us. Let's get more factories. So consider the jewel of the colonial empire by Franco and most of the Spanish generals. <clears throat> Morocco is by far the most developed colony that Iberia possesses, with its humble beginnings as a Spanish protectorate of Morocco, which only controlled a sliver of territory in the north and a couple of enclaves in the east. The colonies expanded immensely with the annexation of the French protect protectorate at the close of the Second World War. Since then, the colony has seen a great number of businesses and settlers flock to it to exploit its riches. As such, we must ensure that Morocco stands strong and keep creating revenue for the nation. Absolutely great. Alright, so we got... Oh boy. Everyone, just go ahead and convert to this one. We don't have enough equipment for them, but I don't really care. Well, hopefully we won't get into any sort of conflict anytime soon. But with the 1962 infrastructure program, with the turn of the year, the time is finally ripe for us to unveil our new infrastructure plan... or expansion plans. <clears throat> 
The beginning will be marked only by minor improvements to create the foundational framework for larger, more comprehensive plans for our new economic structure in the Union. With the highlight of this year's project being the construction of a new semi-major road in the outer Madrid, Caudillo Franco has taken a surprising amount of interest in the construction. Reportedly, he has been visiting several different sites and expecting work regularly with keen attention. Optimistic Union officials seem to have missed the ensuing grumble that gripped the parts of Portuguese society at the news of the plans. Many regions of the country are in dire need of repair, so financing road works hundreds of miles away seems ineffectual at best and neglectful at worst. However, those involved in the project remain daily confident that its completion will not have any hindrances due to large security conditions being posted to specifically watch for separatist ter terrorists. Even more importantly, they recognize the potential the start of this project could have for the infrastructure of the whole Union. Let us hope so. Oh, let's see if it's a desert fox, but he... Mm, I don't like that. I don't like a guard. I really don't. Let's see. Uh, Francisco Coloma... Uh, Gallegos. I don't speak Spanish. I'm sorry. I do my best. Led by. Oh man, you are. Uh, I don't like old guards. I'm probably going to go Antonio. Ah, the Reich's last conquest. <clears throat> Hitler received great applause on television today as he announced that the Reich has successfully defeated both America and Japan in its race to the moon. Eberhard Kölner, using a rocket based upon the A9-A10 design from World War II, and as a member of the team led by the acclaimed scientist Werner von Braun, successfully landed on Luna, broadcast in multiple angles and with thousands of pictures taken. <clears throat> Celebrations have sparked across Germany, while America and Japan have both proclaimed that they will continue the race, and that it does not end with simply one man landing on a rock. <laughs> the news had received mixed responses on Iberia, and Caldillo Franco released a short and terse statement in response. Rumors from his inner circle state that all members of the government were greatly displeased that the Union has yet to even develop such technology, and was quite angry that the Germans were the ones to land first. Already, several speculators have begun to question whether or not the Germans staged the landing for the propagandists, for propaganda value, and conspiracy theories are abound. The race is not yet over. Well... Hmm, Loon Man? Moon landings? Sound like a lot of fake news to me and conspiracy. Just kidding. Yeah. We never landed on the moon. I'm gonna get you just because we have river buffs, maybe. Fortress Buster, or, yeah, river buffs. Uh, equipment capture ratio. Actually, you know what? I never choose scavenger. We'll probably never use them, so let's go with that one. And now we got some more factories. Uh, Hassan's paycheck. Let's grab ventures in Algeria. Considered the jewel of the colonial empire of Al-Salazar, Algeria is the latest venture Iberia has founded itself taking part in. With the chaos in the French colonies that followed the end of the Second World War, both Italian and Iberian troops rushed in to secure Algeria. Although it was clear that both countries wanted the colony for themselves, the French never officially handed authority over to them, as they believed Algeria was as integral to France as Paris was. However, with the military restrictions imposed by, on France by the Germans, it was unable to properly claim anything outside of Algeria. Yet, despite not allowing the French to defend their colony, the Germans also continued to recognize a claim to it. With France now a loyal German puppet state, neither Rome nor Madrid dared to claim Algeria as theirs. Instead, they each began to se send settlers into the areas of influences both countries had in the region to begin building a proper claim over the territory. The Iberian settlers have been neglected for too long now, due to the government having more important matters to attend to. But with Italy on the move, it is time to properly develop and strengthen our area of control in Algeria. Very, very good. Oh, and now we can actually we can abandon the dam. I'm not going to abandon the dam no matter what happens. We're actually going to go ahead and spend some political power just so that we can increase the current budget for the dam. So this way we can start... Oh, the dam workers are angry. Assassin strikes at Hitler, a house divided. That's not good. This is why I put Sanchez in. Um, just make sure that the workers are content. They're not happy. They're just content. And so we can start building upgrades, improve their situation. And I just realized that Andorra is free from our country. What the heck? The Principality of Andorra? That is a big Bayeric island. Actually, this is supposed to be two islands. After the dam was here... Oh god, Borm was named successor. But that's interesting that this is one island now. Why do you exist? Ah, Ventures in Algeria. The last bandits. Uh, stability is nice. It's not much, but let's grab the last bandits. Even though the presence of bandits in our area of influence in Algeria is much smaller than in Italy's, there's still quite a few bands that operate in our territory. Made by French renegades and local natives, they steal rations and guns and from time to time assault military patrols. Well, not a huge problem, of course. They are annoying nonetheless. Thanks to our intelligence in the region and with the help of military forces there, we have located the headquarters of those pesky bandits and now they shall face the consequences of their actions. We get a little bit more manpower and our colony down here gets a little bit of uh, stability. The Outer Madrid wrote proposal. Unsurprisingly, the new flagship infrastructure plan has hit the same filter of survival that most policy proposals hit once both halves of ever-bickering union has access to information regarding them. 
angry invoices, and incessant photo phone calls to the Ministry of the Interior in Madrid were all of the same nature, a rejection of the plan to start construction of the proposed highway outside the Spanish capital because of another trivial matter. The matter of the tools being used, not it being exactly proportional in terms of national origin. This obstacle has the potential to freeze the Iberian domestic arm of the government if not truly addressed, thus we have options to consider for going forward. Use more construction equipment of Portuguese make. Bribe them with a matching road in Lisbon. I think that's okay. We'll give them a matching road. So the Gibraltar Dam. Ever since the Germans built that godforsaken dam in the Gibraltar Straits, our economy has been weakened and our people with it. The dam is near collapse and on the verge of killing millions in the land that it once was sea. And we're the only ones who stand in the way of it. We shall not forget. Yeah, that's going to suck. But that decision we just took regarding the, like, the road construction and the tools used, it doesn't really matter, I think. It, it has a little bit of influence, but not what happens later on. We'll see what happens. I don't know. How many factories we got? Seven. That's not bad. And using civilian budget boost, we get a little more political power. Because even with that, we only get 0.87 a day, which is not very much. And it does hurt us in our deficit, but, you know, whatever. Civilian spending is the most important thing that we spend money on right now, but that's okay. Los banditos. Mm. Improved settler's opinion. It doesn't really matter. It really doesn't. Uh, just do this one. Expanding Ifni. <clears throat> One of the most important ports within Moroccan territory, Ifni holds a military ba naval base, and since the mid-50s, <clears throat> a considerable trading hub due to being one of the few ports Iberia owns in the Atlantic, and that as such as not being rendered useless by Atlantropa. The convoys and containers that come here just keep increasing with time, and there's been already a number of times where the port authorities had to redirect vessels to secondary ports because Ifni was at full capacity. As a key element in the Moroccan economy, the government has decided to greatly expand the port to allow more ships in and therefore increase the quantity of trade that flows into the region. The naval base's military naval base will also be expanded, although not as much as its civilian partner, for better defense of the region, which we get a whole one, one naval base. <clears throat> Cool. So Madrid's looking pretty good. We still need to get a general, but we could train, but I don't think we have enough supplies. Eh, we're not doing bad on supplies, actually. Yeah, it's not too bad. We haven't even talked about the Air Force, but the asphalt mixture. The planning phase for the new infrastructure project has again halted at an early point in the resource stage due to a dispute that began after a rather sharp Portuguese civil servant noticed diverging Portuguese and Spanish material regulations on asphalt mixtures. There's a possibility that this may ruin the road further if, it, if work continues without any intervention. Considering that this will be a coordinated effort between both union members, it is important for propaganda reasons that this is done right. Then again, it is only a row, and the bigger the projects, the bigger projects are on the horizon afterwards, and will be far better at helping to stabilize the Iberian unity. How should we proceed on this issue? This is Spanish soil, so Spanish laws must be put in place. Appeal for federal laws on road construction material. Who needs regulations? Use what we brought along. We're going to appeal for federal laws on road construction materials, so that way we can both use exactly the same thing and hopefully unify the government, even though I could be taking all the wrong decisions here. And I have no idea what's going to happen. Actually, I do hopefully have an idea, but I hope we stay as a union. Watch out, we got one whole naval base. Let's grab new equipment for the garrison. The colonial army was, was where a great number of today's high command developed their early career. Franco himself included. It was a key element in crushing the communists during the Spanish Civil War and brought bravely against the Moratian rebels in the 50s. To this day, it's the first line of defense against any possible invaders that may strike the colonies first, and is also in charge of keeping peace in our territories beyond Gibraltar. As such, it should be well equipped at all times. While it's been lacking in the last few years due to the budget mismanagement, the colonial officers will be happy to hear of their boys are getting some brand new toys just as good as those peninsular troops use. Great, we get a bonus to stuff here, and improves the military's opinion of Franco. Alright, so now we got it, the Gibraltar Dam payment. We basically have to do the administration building, so we get a lot more things unlocked, which I think will be a very, very good thing. Man, we got to get that dam finished as fast as possible, though. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, no. Barat Autonomous Soviet Social Republic has been taken out. Oh, no. Yagoda, what did you do? Yagoda, why? Oh, no. New equipment for the garrison, great. Let's go and do Hassan's paycheck. Mohammed V of Morocco died in late 61, and his son Hassan II took charge of the Moroccan throne shortly after. Even though Mohammed was subservient to Iberia, he was a great man of great intelligence and sense of survival. He played with us like we were his puppets, managing to accumulate a great deal of power for the Moroccan crown. Now that his son is a Moroccan king, and he has been partially educated to respect Iberian authorities, some members of government fear that he may take more, or take after his father, and maneuver to achieve more power. That's why he is suggesting the allowance the government gives to the Moroccan king be revisited and curtailed to decrease the powers of the monarch, whether it's through a smaller quantity of money or a stronger grip on his influence. So be it. So be it. Not bad, only less than 200 million. It's only a million, that sounds, that's okay. Muscovine's looking nice and thick, I like Muscovine. With all that size, there's got to be a lot of issues, but the question of repairs. So, with the asphalt mixture problem resolved and the investigation underway, we've been given the go-ahead. 
to start our own project. State-sanctioned contractors are, being, are beginning to arrive in droves already, making great progress as they begin to tear out defunct infrastructure to implement the new great works. Both foreign and domestic journalists gasp in awe when they get their allotted time to visit the construction sites, a process requiring a great deal of effort and delay on our part as everything is to be prepared accordingly in advance. On one such visit, everything changed, however. Time coming to a freezing halt as a blood-curdling scream tears down the perfect visage we created. An explosion of asphalt ruptures the now troubling earth, exposing cracks within the hardly settled concrete. Swaths of rogue traded in tons of dynamite were preemptively detonated in the foundations of an interchangeable, reduced, reducing days of toil into rubble and ash. Large stockpiles of resources and machinery were lost in the horrific mess. Emergency services were deployed within minutes, tending to wounds and attempting to pull grasping, bloodied hands out of the charred piles of ruin. We have confirmed four deaths and over 300 workers injured, adding costly medical bills to the already colossal repairs we need to immediately address. After the cry, Biantan Jar... Jarail was reported during the chaos, we have strong evidence supporting the notion that Basque separatists belonging to socialist organizations are directly responsible for the attacks, based off reports of similar terrorist activities that have plagued other government-sponsored public works. <clears throat> the SECD has begun an investigation to address the suspicions, but in the meantime, we need to figure out how to amend or adjust our budget to deal with the shortfall. How should we recover from this disaster? Ask for a grant of Spanish tax money, Iberian tax money, cut corners, we can save materials here and there. Um, ask for a grant of... I'm going to say Iberian tax money. We're in this union together, so both sides should put up some money. Just because... That's not cool. Why would you blow us up, man? Just because you're a socialist, angry socialist, doesn't mean you blow us up. Man, that's not cool. Now, this takes forever to get done. 75 days. So the federal tax money proposal. Our request for more federal tax money to be used for repairing the road has been finally accepted by both officials in Madrid and Lisbon. Our constructions can hopefully continue and eventually finish without any further delay. Thank goodness. And we have Hassan's paycheck. Very good. So, trouble inventory. Even though the Moroccan coast is fairly, un is fairly urbanized, the interior has a great deal of small, isolated villages and caravans that live in the harsh environment of the Saharan Desert. Normal accountability in these regions is hard to do, and as such, a yearly inventory is done where several bureaucrats travel to these remote settlements and allow the caravans to both make them pay for their annual taxes, as well as keep track of the state that these people live in, in case it was necessary for the authorities to intervene and give them any sort of aid. <clears throat> they get a whole couple of business, uh, building slots. Wow, watch out. June 14th, not bad, not bad. Just keep it up. Remember, everyone, debt is but a number. And even if we go over the debt number, that's okay. Construction, I'm going to increase construction too. Because my goal, like, I, this might be good, this might not be good. Actually, the GDP growth is really bad. But just a little bit more depth. We're going to spend more money because I want to build, 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 build. That GDP has got to go up with civilian factories. We got to invest as much as we can into building the commercial enterprises of Iberia for now. Let's get some passages, though. Because settlers that go to Algeria technically go there because they want to, the government can't op help openly help them, and getting to Algeria is already difficult, very difficult for most families. Most of them travel through the Moroccan portion of the Sahara without much infrastructure or directions, and many of them never make it to the end, instead of being devoured by the sands and dunes. To counter this, a series of roads will be built and s signs will be installed to help the settlers find the way to the new homes. The whole operation will be concealed as a simple expansion of the Moroccan road network in the region to not raise... <clears throat> French suspicion. So the national animal. Ooh, I like this. Iberian unity has always been a rather dicey affair, especially in these turbulent times. While there are many who would use the instability to advance the cause of their own ethnic group, there are also plenty of loyal citizens who wish to keep our union intact. Artists, musicians, politicians, and even ordinary people who have known to come together to try and define a united Iberian culture. Usually, these are mere blips on the radar, but sometimes something extraordinary comes from it, like the shared conquistador pride, or the fact that both Portuguese and Spanish have a hatred for Moors, and sometimes these attempts end in a disaster. Oh no. It all started off as a well-meaning collaboration between the Lisbon and Madrid uh, art guilds in the hopes of producing a piece of art that symbolized the unity of Spain and Portugal. After some deliberation, the artists agreed that the project would consist of a grand mural displaying what they hoped to be Iberia's new national animal. Taking the Spanish bull and the Portuguese rooster as pieces of inspiration, the artists slaved away day and night to create a masterpiece. Unfortunately, though, when it was finally revealed before a crowd two weeks later, the reactions were less than stellar. The finished project, which for some reason ended being a mix of all mixed up algamation of rooster and cow body parts with seven pairs of horns and at least three heads immediately earned the ire of the entire nation that they were trying to appeal to. Described by onlookers as very variably as an abomination, a piece of vomit inducing graffiti that wouldn't pass in an American art school, <laughs> and proof that Jesus died in vain, of course. To make matters worse, the Iberian Chimera, as it has now been dubbed, was leaked to the international community where in many countries it seems to have caught on immediately. Fortunately, in the grand scale of things, this doesn't impact our nation too much, but the mental link between Iberia and the eldritch rooster bull from hell in the minds of foreigners won't go anytime soon. What a load of bull. What the hell is that? Look at that. What? Huh? 
artist. This is why you have to look at the artist's work before you give them your final approval. Man, just you gotta you gotta keep an eye on this stuff. Yeah, I'm still a little worried about this interest on debt. Hmm. But that's just but a number, right? Stability. It's okay. It's not great. Uh, in addition to Iberia, as a former member of the Triumvirate, the Caldillos of the Union of Iberia, Francisco Franco, Bajomonda, and Antonio de Oliveira Salazar are invited to the conference that will be held in Orberga de Castile, Malta. Franco's name being put before Salazar has already started a protocol crisis in the Portuguese government. Although Caldillo Salazar is not personally concerned with this minor infraction, Iberia will be present at the conference. Time to take a stand. Who cares? Someone's got to be first. It means nothing. So, the investigation. After the bureaucratic nightmare that was finding the necessary funds for the desperately needed repairs, it seemed as if we may at least at last proceed. The many confused workmen were finally allowed back on site and the immense amount of resources again made available. The heavy machinery was driven out of storage, it was, if only it were so simple. In the early hours of the morning of official repairs, the construction was, site was suddenly swarmed with mysterious men in dark suits, who could be quickly cordoned off the area and hustled several other foremen into black vans before ordering the workers to vacate the site immediately. When the regional governor's office received a phone call from one of the contractors explaining what had happened, he was furious. However, the, the tone was dampened by the arrival of SECED agents bringing less than ideal news. They had already identified the people responsible for the bombings, a group of radicalized Basque students turned separatists with left leanings. The ringleader was one Igno Nunez, cousin of Alfredo Nunez, one of the four men of a contractor hired on the project. SECED had reasons to believe that Alfredo may have already aided his cousin's terrorist cell in organizing the bombings, and that he was not the only the one operating on the inside. They have obtained an official warrant to fully investigate and audit all contractors who we have hired, in order to vet them for any associates of Alfredo who may share his separatist ideology. In the meantime, all road work must be halted for the duration of the investigation, effective immediately to make sure that no further damage can be inflicted on the already controversy-stricken controversy project. Are you really... Did you, are you kidding me? Come on, man! Insider job, man. I swear to God, they gotta be taken out. Ah, but we'll clean up some passages in the meantime. Ah, let's go out plantations in Guinea. Several prominent businessmen have approached the government with a plan to, re to start building plantations in Guinea. They say that the climate in the colony is perfect for it, and they provide jobs for most of the population there. To further try to convince us to accept, they have pledged to do all the necessary work to clean up the dense jungle there, creating the necessary infrastructure to transport the goods, and run the plantation so that the government would only see profit. While it seems that the plan is perfect, the people behind it are infamous in their high circles of uh, beer and society for having frequent contact with Siegfried Müller, the Reichskommissar of Central Africa. Central Africa has been revealed to submit the natives to a state of near slavery when working in the plantations, but this would, won't happen in Guinea, right? Right? So, Siano gives the opening speech. Over the past few days, the delegates from around the tournament have arrived. Tensions are high, and many attendees aren't exactly sure what the purpose of the conference is. Those questions, however, are set to be answered as Dolce Gaezo Siano takes the stage. Honor delegates, he begins. We have gathered here today to put aside our differences and reaffirm the greatness of our alliance. I know many of you have disputes and issues to raise, but this is the place to do it. Many of the audience are shocked by the bluntness of his words, but there are a few smiles. At least he recognizes this is going to be a complete shit show, uh, murmurs one Turkish diplomat to another. My apologies for bad words, I'm just merely role-playing. The triumvirate was forged in fire, Siano continues, and as the world falls back into chaos, we must be open and frank with one another if our alliance is to survive. We are like brothers, squabbling sometimes, but always united in purpose and bound by familial love and common history. Siano finished. I now invite my brother from Turkey to take the stage. Let's get this over with, and let's look at the faction. Not bad, it's a pretty nice faction, but it's gonna fall apart, let's be real. It always does. It always does. Let's go ahead and spend... Oh, we can't add more money. Oh, we could add more money. We're going to wait first. 8.5 billion is not bad. And this doesn't really affect us that much at all, so... And the Turkish speech. As Siano steps down from the stage, the Turkish Basberg Als... Al Parsian Turkish walks forward, and while the Turkish delegation responds with raucous applause, the rest of the de delegation is rather muted. I will not bore you with bland pleasantries like the Duce. Turkish halting Italian... Uh, is overcome with the directness of his words. Seattle's right in one regard when he brings up our shared history. We have a history of disputed borders, he roars. The Turkish delegation responds with shouts and cheers, while the rest of the conference looks on sullenly. Many expected such a response, but many few were prepared for the directness of Basenberg's words. I'm not opposed to the, Turk to the triumvirate in and of itself, the Turkish continues. The collective security it offers is a blessing in this tumultuous world. But Turkey is to continue to remain a member. We must have our ancestral lands back. We are fed up with European domination of our sphere of influence. I look forward to meeting with the leaders of our alliance and to discuss our disputed claims and their return to the rightful Tur motherland Turkey, or Turkey A. The Turkish delegation practically leaped from the seats, slamming their feet to the ground and cheering. Where's them? Hold on. So you're saying the Europeans are too much in your affairs. So you're saying you're not European, Turkey? What are you saying? Are you saying you're not European? Like, let's be real here. Are you or are you not? Hmm. 
but an investigation finds suspicious activity. The investigation into Outer Madrid Road Project has found several suspicious practices, including fraud, bribery, and neglect of proper vetting procedures for employees. A heavy fine is being drafted for the road building company to try to minimize mitigating damage to the government. Uh, the, the issue of further dragging the project on is hardly even being considered. At this point, it could be worse. So, the Iberian speech. After that dangerously inflammatory speech, it was time for the two Cadillos of Iberia to take the stage. The two walked together, rubbing shoulders in the attempt to follow foreign protocol. Salazar spoke first, of course. Honored leaders, he began, we wish to see the triumvirate remain united just like our friend and ally, Basbar Turks. And just like him, we have disputes of our own to solve. Franco picked up there. However, unlike him, we will not resort to threats and nationalist agitation. We truly see an equal agreement for all parties of the triumvirate. This was met by jeers and heckling from some of the audience. We are all equal partners in this great alliance. Remember, for whatever reason you are here, there is one issue more important than all the rest. The preservation of the Mediterranean Brotherhood, one and united. The two awkwardly took turns speaking for around half an hour, and while they were met with polite, polite applause from the audience, a fair few had dozed off by the time they finished. Fall the Mediterranean Brotherhood. At least we're trying to work together, man. What are you guys doing? Just trying to kill each other? Huh? But reinforce Mod Mauritania. Although not a frontier colony itself, Mauritania is considered the wild frontier of the colonial empire. Sediments are scarce. Infrastructure is poor. And worst of all, bandits are a common occurrence. Needless that didn't get ex didn't accept Iberian rule when the area was pacified in the 50s, regularly raided any town or village they find no matter who inhabits it. Mauritania has valuable minerals underneath it, and their extraction would create jobs and wealth for the region, but with the bandits running around, no serious attempts at mining have been tried. If we want to develop the region and maintain its ob and obtain its riches, the first step is sending more troops and building more military infrastructure down there to help fight those that work against us, and we get some land forts. Great things, land forts. Now, we could spend mil political power down here, but we got to remember, we got to spend political power with our Caldillo po popularity, which we're going to do all these. I don't really care wh which one is the leader. I, I, I kind of like Franco a little bit more, just because he's in my mind, a little bit more historical because he was in the Civil War, but I don't really care. The opening of the Canal Conference. A major point of contention among the delegates is the Suez Canal. Transferred to Italian control following the victory in Egypt. They've held sole authority over transit over the canal since then, forcing other triumphant members to pay dues just like any other country outside the alliance. Iberia especially has long wanted access to the canal as they like the ground presence of Turkey in the region. Italy and Iber Ital Iberian delegates, both observers from other triumvirate member nations, have gathered in an opulent ballroom to discuss access to the canal. Let us begin. And let us hope it goes relatively smoothly. Military austerity? Nope, 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 nope. Spend more on the on the budget. Spend more on the budget. Man, I'm really... I spend a lot, man. But 16, 17, that's not bad. I'll be done within a week. Help us out. So, Liberian demands. We'll read that after we do... Uh, ah, this one. Electrify Equatorial Guinea. Uh, the southern frontier of their empire, Equatorial Guinea, has been part of Spain for almost 100 years now. Expanded in the late 1940s with the chaos in Africa and now stands as a first line of defense against German aggression in the continent. However, just like the rest of the southern part of the empire, the state that Equatorial Guinea is in could be much better. While the colony is relatively developed and urban, it lacked proper electrical, electrical infra infrastructure throughout most of the territory. To resolve this, a special commission of the electoral company, Andesa, will be sent there to oversee and participate in the electrification of the region. As for the demands, the first negotiating session, Iberian diplomat Fernando Maria Castilla e Maez, uh, demanded Iberia have equal access to the canal. Deliberations continued for hours until finally the Spaniard slammed his hand on the table. You've held the canal for too damn long, he yelled. Why the hell should we, your ally, be forced to pay to use it? We'll even give you a one-time lump sum of aid money if you give us unlimited access. That's my final offer. You can take it or leave it. Things are, of course, heating up. And I have a good feeling things are going to potentially fall apart. I didn't realize part of Serbia was demilitarized. But Siano refuses. He fires back. Ridiculous. We've trusted you for 20 years, and this is how you repay us? Offering a paltry sum for something we fought and bled over? Of course not. The negotiations negotiations are over. The Iberian delegates shocked reply. This is outrageous. We expect to be treated as equals, not children. They continued by claiming that they would not participate on later discussions over territorial disputes, and concluded with a scathing attack on Siano. We joined you decades ago because you promised equality and freedom for tyranny. But now, you are no better than the Germans. Luring over us like some petty Reichskommissariat. We're done with this conference. As expected. I just want to get my civilian factories done, man, and help the GDP. So we got one more, and that's probably going to actually increase civilian spending. But it is what it is, you know. Lane expansion? The project should have been simple. It should have just been a two-lane road going from point A to point B. I thought I'd pause the game. I did. Okay, the Croatian autumn. Yet, sadly, nothing can be that simple. These are turbulent times for Iberia, a political union where the building of a road is vastly outdone in an effort, just by the time scale of getting everything about said road approved with multiple administrations. Every little thing must bear with it 50 clauses and 100 subsections, although the mix of payment itself could potentially spark an inter-ethnic conflict were it not for a corpulent bureaucracy that keeps us moving at a snail's pace. 
The government in Madrid has now become involved in the construction of the road, and with it comes an entirely other in magnitude of legislature and administration. The bombing of the road has forced us to create an extra wide shoulder to be able to actually get equipment across the crater left by the site attack. Madrid is now demanding that we turn this shoulder into an entirely new lane. They have no idea what they're asking for, or more likely they don't even care. This is the case for the federal government. You would have to file a pile's worth of appeal paperwork asking for a permit to actually alter the road we're working on. And then, of course, there's a lengthy waiting period, all just so a committee can, of pencil pushers and nepotists, nepotists can take a quick glance at the paperwork and grant or deny your request on what it feels like a whim. Madrid's ignorance of the realities in the ground are mind-numbing. We can't just turn a larger than average shoulder into an entirely new rain, lane. The shoulders would have to be expanded, the budget would have to be reconsidered, and we'd fall just once more into the seemingly endless abyss of bureaucracy we've been dealing with for the past months. Uh, appeal to the federal government, Did not, to hell the city government. Uh, I want to say, hmm, just go ahead and accept the request, just get it over with. If you want it, you better pay for it. I barely want 10 board conference, of course. True to the word, the Iberian delegates were nowhere to be seen this morning, as the various dignitaries took their treat seats for the board conference. Turkish diplomats looked relieved, while Italian delegates shared worried glances. Siano feared the conference was collapsing around him. Let them have their little charade. I just want to get through one more focus, and then we'll call it an episode. Yeah, man. That was really stupid of Italy to deny us that, because their relations with the Turks are very poor. Very, very poor. And Yugoslavia exists. Wait, Yugoslavia exists without... The government of national salvation, huh? But let us finish with connecting the islands. Besides the Azores, Madeira, Barracks, and the Canary Islands, Iberia also owns several archipelagos far from the peninsula, namely Cape Verde, Sao Tome, and the Prince of and the Fernando Po. These islands have given a very have a very small population, are mostly agrarian, therefore the attention they have received from the central government is almost non existent. Infrastructure infrastructure is weak, and they depend on the transport convoys that regularly tour them to give them supplies like medicines and machines. These convoys apparently don't visit the islands with enough frequency as there have been several angry letters from the governors they are asking for more frequent supply deliveries. To alleviate this, convoy visits will be made twice a month. Not only that, but bigger ports will be built and the islands to better integrate them into the country, with frequent civilian transport ships doing the trip between these archipelagos and the peninsula, but that's going to end today's episode, my friends. We did not get too far but we are almost done with this part of the focus tree and we have been pissed off by the italians but what else is new but if you like the video guys consider leaving a like subscribe if you're new check out my discord link if you haven't already and i'll see you tomorrow as we shall progress further and hopefully begin really working on the dam thanks for watching though and have a great rest of your day